Uh, I would uh, introduce you to my panel, a brief introduction by my side, and then the panelists will introduce themselves and their field of work. Uh, we have with us Anika Prasha. She is a CEO of River Rock Ventures, uh, passionate about women brands and services. She plays a major role in creation and development of some of the iconic brands in India, brands like Mom and Me, Mom's Lounge, Mama Mia. I think most of us know about the hospital Fortis La Fame. And uh, I told Anika I delivered my second born there at Fortis, and it was a beautiful experience. Anika? Hi, thank you. Um, so, I mean, I think uh, you've done a fairly good intro. Uh, I think. Um, what I'd like to add to that is I'm also the chairperson of an NGO that I founded when my mother had a heart transplant about seven years ago. It's called Organ India. And, uh, you know, we spread awareness on organ donation and transplant in the country. We work very closely with the ministry and other NGOs in, um, in actually getting this entire environment of donation and um, uh, receiving transplants a little bit more aligned. Um, and uh, I'm proud to say that we've actually managed to uh, move leaps and bounds over the last so many years. Um, yes, I was, uh, I did create something called Mama Mia. Before that, it was Mom's Lounge um, at Mom and Me, so with Mahindra Retail, and then Mama Mia with Fortis, um, and then I looked after the Fortis La Femme Women's Hospitals. So working for women with women is a, is a great passion of mine. Um, my next project is also launching on International Women's Day, and it's a project for women, um, which we'll wait and see when it launches. Um, and other than that, I'm, uh, I'm the mother of two teenagers who inspire me and motivate me every day. So every day is a new day and an exciting day uh, as the mom of Nirvana and Nayat. Nice. So I would like to introduce Ashta uh, Tashi. And uh, she's a coach, empower people through health, spiritual outlook, meditation, crystal healing therapy, one-on-one -on -one psychic reading sessions. Some of the tools she used to make people happy, healthier, balancing the aspects, physical, mental, and emotional with spiritual tools. Tashi. Namaskar. Um, so yeah, I'm Ashtar Tashi. Uh, I have been a fashion designer and stylist from NIFT. I was the second batch of fashion design at NIFT eons ago. So I'm not going to let you guess my age now. But um, I moved, I did fashion for 15 years and then realized that there was still this emptiness. I think all of us go through that. We're, you know, many, many of us, most of us here would probably be entrepreneurs and uh, business people and making a lot of money and success and all of that but that was causing an emptiness inside me and I became a seeker and once I started seeking I realized that not only I but everybody around who is doing well in life is still feeling incomplete so while I started completing myself I started helping other people feel more complete so that's what I do um, I help people understand their karmic journeys I know on a platform like this, when we are talking entrepreneurship and business and all of that, one needs to understand the balance of when we're talking work-life, I think we should make it work, life and soul because life is incomplete without having a soul connect with yourself. It's not just your mind and body that is at work. Your soul has to be in connect with everything that you do. So the awareness is important. And I think on a platform like this to understand the awareness of why you are doing what you are doing is extremely important. Why is it that you are making the money? Why is it that you're reaching out to more and more people? Why are you changing lives through your entrepreneurship uh, platforms, right? Your businesses. So that's where I come in. I help people understand their karmic journeys. I work with crystals, chakras. Basically bring your lives into balance. That's, that's what I do. And I've written a book called uh, Keep Shining. And that book has various chapters on self-love and drawing boundaries and all, but a very interesting chapter that is there, which ties in very nicely, I was telling uh, Sonal earlier, it's called Feminine Wisdom. It's about how men and women 
have to understand their feminine and their masculine aspect. So that book is, in fact, I've got copies here if anybody wants to pick up a few later. Thank so that's you. about me. Thank, Thank you. you. So I would like to introdu introduce Malini Sabah. Uh, she is a self-made businesswoman, a uh, philanthropist. Uh, she has uh, um, her presence in 20 different countries. That's what she told me. And uh, the line I read today morning when I was going through her LinkedIn profile, and I just love that line. And that line is, an individual right in hum is a human right. And I think it's not a line only, I think it's a mindset and that's a beautiful mindset, Sabha. So can you tell more about yourself? Hello everyone, it's a um, pleasure to be here. I, um, I started uh, my business when I was 21 years old. I didn't want to work for anybody, so I didn't want anyone telling me what to do. So you can tell that I'm very stubborn. Um, and the only way for me to make change in the world was to have my own business. And I started off as a venture capitalist in a man's world because no one wanted to hire me in their firm. So I actually took my own money and started my own company and said, I will go and invest in all the men's companies and rode the wave uh, of the tech boom in the early 90s and with God's grace, um, did well and thereafter uh, ventured into commodities and uh, again a completely male world and even today it's a very male world there's not a day that I see a woman I only deal with men on every level but the commodity space co that we're in goes from agriculture into mining and we're in 20 different countries I really focus on hiring mainly women in my company because I want to create the culture of women in this space. I feel women um, are a lot more understanding and a lot more multitasking, uh, a lot more emotional and look at the problem in a very different way and try and find solutions in, in the easiest, simplest way rather than complicate a situation or go and be antagonistic, um, which in the world that I'm in tends to be priority. Um, we've pretty much at the moment diversified and in going into the media space because I feel that in order to really change mindset, media has to change. Because media is one of the biggest causes of the way the world looks at women and how women is portrayed in movies, in you know, shows, even in interviews. Um, I agree with all my colleagues here we're all equal. There isn't a male entrepreneur or a female entrepreneur. We're all just entrepreneurs. That's nice. Uh, so I would like to introduce Savita Raj here. Uh, she is uh, in Bollywood. She is a veteran in Bollywood, in media, like you said, Saba. And uh, she's in an advertisement world and she has won a lot of awards uh, in Bollywood movies. They have made a very famous movie as well. Um, Savita, would you like to share the movie name and your journey so far as an entrepreneur? Yeah, hi, I'm Savita Raj Hiremat. Hiremat was missing, so I am just writing it. Yeah, hi, I started my journey from uh, nursery train teacher. I was because my family only allowed uh, only one profession was allowed was teaching for women that point of time and they were not open for any other profession. Actually, they never wanted any woman to work out. It's a conservative Punjabi family. So that was the only way out and um, I, when I joined uh, teaching in nursery or, or a primary school, I won best teacher award. And after that, I was definitely looking for a life partner who, who actually allows me to grow further. And I married to a gentleman called Raj Hiremat. I met him through Rock Dumber and we were married in six months. And my only question to him was that, are you open that if I change my profession? He said, do whatever you want, it's your life. And that's the day until today, he's never stopped me from doing anything. 
and I, he taught me, he was into advertising, I learned advertising, I think we won 100 and, I don't know how many awards, 180 awards in advertising all over. And uh, I mean, my media friends are here and they, they will vouch that I actually started media buying in, ad, in Delhi City. And we became a retail, uh, you know, creative hub for uh, retail advertising. We opened a different segment of, for retail in India. Then from there, I got bored. I thought, let me expand from that creative world to working within the client's brief to go work in open space in creativity. And we produced film called Khosla Ka Ghosla. I don't know if you, uh, and how many of yes, you I've have seen, seen the movie and it's a beautiful movie. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, again, we won national award and I had to struggle being uh, like someone drill, uh, just mentioned that it's men's word. Yes, film producer, to be a film producer is absolutely men's word, they say. But I, I don't think that we should see any business from that uh, perspective. It's, it's business end of the day and we, if we at this stage should not get stuck with men word or any, anything like that. Business is business and there is an opportunity. I always wanted to take films as, as low cost product and high return and like any other brand. So uh, it took two years for industry, film industry to release that film to understand what I was trying to say. They said it will not work, there's no item number, there is no big heroine or hero. And how can a hoarding of Baman and Anupam will fetch audience in the theatres? So how can we take that risk? I, and I had to convince the industry to release it and after that they gave me Path Breaking Cinema Award and National Award. Phil was at Cannes and now it's Oscar Library also. So it's just your conviction which works. And now my next film, Jhund, is coming up. Uh, which is with Mr. Bachchan as a hero, I mean lead role. And it's on slum soccer team of India. India has a slum soccer team and they won uh, World Cup also. It's a true story of a professor called Vijay Barse. The trailer and teasers are out, so look forward, please. Sure, thank you. We all will look forward for Mr. Bachchan's movie, for sure. So, um, I think I would like to introduce myself, then I would like to introduce Radhika because I want to start off with Radhika's topic. I'm a businesswoman. I run three organizations. One is Madusa Fashion. It is a domestic brand and we are into events and exhibition. Uh, we give a platform to young talented designers coming out of colleges, NIFT, INFT, Pearl, and all such colleges and give them a sales platform and a I would say a very uh, reasonable recognition platform. So far we have given 20 blockbuster events in Delhi and Bombay. Uh, then I run a second organization which is an international supply chain management company. We have office in Milan as well. So 15 days I'm there, 15 days I'm here. And I can see a lot of shift in the mindset. And I was discussing with the panelists here that uh, um, I think uh, Radhika asked me, uh, what challenge do you face in, uh, in your business world? So I told him, not in India, I never faced uh, gender equality, but I'm surprised to say that I felt that in Europe. I did. And uh, then I thought that India is really a progressive country. And thank you to all the progressive men who are sitting here and listening to us and are part of our journey and part of our growth. I run a third company which is a mood board consultancy. We give consultancy to Indian international brands to penetrate into the Indian market and vice versa domestic brands to penetrate into the international market. I would like to introduce now Radhika Sapoor G. Uh, she has a very interesting mix of religion though but uh, her uh, uh, asset is mediation and that's a beautiful, I think, uh, profession she is in and uh, I think I have a lot to learn from Radhika. So Radhika, can you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Radhika Shapurji um, and uh, 
I am a co-founder of a mediation consultancy called Mediation Mantras. Um, somebody said meditation. Uh, meditation is an important part of mediation, but mediation is about uh, resolving. We help organizations, people, help them resolve their conflicts in an amicable manner. So I think in a world that is full of conflict, uh, in a world that has become so adversarial, in a world where uh, it's about me winning and you losing, uh, and that's the heart of every conflict, what we teach is how can you resolve your conflict in a way that is not win-lose, but win-win for both. So uh, my background is that I've been in communication for the last 30 years. Uh, last, I was the head of a global public relations firm called uh, IPAN Hill & Olton. It's a WPP firm. And uh, I worked there for 10 years, and I was a trusted advisor to CEOs, to women entrepreneurs, uh, to politicians, to government officials, uh, to industry associations. It was a wonderful, wonderful uh, journey in terms of building relationships. Uh, and it was interesting when I heard uh, uh, Tashi saying that she felt a sense of emptiness. And uh, even though I was heading a firm, I had 150 people for 11 years, 10 years, I felt this is something that I need to, I need something more. And uh, I'm so delighted to say that mediation did find me. It was my last project in my organization. And I discovered the true value of an idea that that time has come. And um, I'm also happy to say that, uh, uh, you know, I was in advertising where I met uh, my husband, Mr. Mehel Nor Shapuji. He's here with me. Uh, we co-founded Mediation Mantras, and our aim and purpose is to advocate, teach, train uh, organizations, people, uh, on how to resolve conflict in a manner that builds relationships. Thank so you. Radhika, my question to you is that we are talking about the training the new gen of women entrepreneurs. Like we discussed before that uh, all the women entrepreneurs are very well trained. What are the new traits they need to be trained in? I think mediation is one. So if you can elaborate mediation with meditation, Tashi, that will be a beautiful amalgamation, I would think. Thank you. So uh, I'll start with a story. So one of uh, my first, uh, one, of, one of the really important, I would say all imp uh, assignments are important, but a very interesting assignment that I recently completed in mediation was uh, a conflict, a, you know, a four-year conflict between two co-founders. So the investors had come in because uh, the conflict had risen to a level where it was impacting their one-downs. They had, you know, many one-downs and it was a large... Uh, a mid-sized large organization. And uh, so when I came in, I, uh, I was introduced to two gentlemen. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it took me about 10 sessions and in, 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 uh, across about eight weeks to help them resolve their conflict. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, my inspiration for helping people to resolve their conflict actually comes back from what we have in India is one of the most wonderful ancient scripts, which is the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita actually says that there are four types of conflicts, uh, conflict with yourself, conflict then becomes conflict with others, your conflict with nature where we are so des desensitized and we are seeing what is happening, and your conflict with God. Now, it was interesting that I was able to actually apply exactly this to uh, the two co-founders. And uh, when I could ask them to leave their ego at the door and bring their spiritual intelligence into the room, uh, we could actually uh, get them, I could actually get them uh, first individually to understand where their inner conflict was, how it impacted the other, and how they could eventually resolve it. And so I have a happy investor. I have, have two happy gentlemen who are working together. 
and uh, so now I we are talking something. about gentlemen here. We are not talking about yeah, women yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and it, that's what we agreed on. That we are not talk going to talk about gender here. We are going to talk about men and women here. Well, actually, you know, I uh, as far as conflict is concerned, uh, I think it is gender neutral. Yeah, uh, conflict is something I'm sure uh, we have uh, such interesting ladies on the panel that I have met. We have a lot of, I can see lots of heads over there, I can't see your faces. But I think conflict is something that all of us, uh, it's very painful. And so how do I you... So I think it's yeah. about the training to the Gen X, not training to the women entrepreneurs, right? It's, I think, it, it, you know, uh, being able to resolve conflict, having those cru crucial conversations at those crucial moments with the crucial people. Uh, so that it, you know, in, it, you, you behave in a manner that builds the relationship and does not destroy the relationship. That training is something that uh, is, is a seven-step process that I was talking to you yeah. about. So I think we talked about seven, uh, Tashi told about seven, uh, what did you say, Tashi? Seven. So I was telling Sonal earlier that there are only seven ideas in this world. There are only seven stories, there are only seven ideas, there are only seven questions. Everything is only about somehow, and I'm not saying it's a spiritual context or something like that. I'm not that wise. But uh, it is about seven questions. And, you know, every lock that is created has a key to it. Every problem that is there in our lives has a solution to it. But what is the... Uh, what is the methodology that one wants to adopt? Whether we are entrepreneurs or whether we are homemakers, we are students, we are, we are still creating energy around us. And as Radhika is saying, mediation, and you said mediation and meditation, you have to be first mediating with yourself. And, and she said how Bhagavad Gita says those four conflicts. The conflict starts with self. So sort yourself out first. It's not about the world outside there, guys. It's about you. So stop questioning yourself all the time. Stop running yourself down. Stop showing yourself down. Stop thinking that the world is unjust to you. You're unjust to yourself to begin with. So, so be that fair means, to yourself. That means, Tashi, that we uh, need to work on ourselves. Absolutely. That's, that's and that will happen through meditation and just yeah. contemplation. Meditation is not sitting in sadhana and closing your eyes and all. Meditation is only being in self-conscious awareness. Why are you taking decisions in your business the way you are taking them? Are you coming out of ego? Are you coming out of running somebody else down, putting somebody else down? Stop doing that, become consciously aware, and the mediations will happen automatically because the conflicts are resolved. It comes that easy, but again, conscious awareness. So Anika, according to what is the new training for the Gen Next men and women out there to be progressive in today's time? So, um, I think there's two things I would say here. One is uh, that we, we tend to get really wrapped up uh, and embroiled in this competitive world, in beating the other person, in getting ahead of ourselves, uh, you know, uh, in shaping our own stories, it's become a very selfish world. And you I know? think you talked about hiring a better... Yes. So one of the things that, uh, you know, when I've been working in women's businesses and mainly, uh, you know, have been a, a, a propagator of, of hiring women. And so I've been accused of discriminating against men. And yes, perhaps, uh, perhaps I have quite proudly. I think you so. talked about hiring better but, uh, quality yes. people than you. Yeah. yeah? So um, apart from that bit, uh, one of the things apart from women, um, I think uh, one thing that's really worked well for me um, and I think that uh, would work well for any entrepreneur is to hire people or partner with people who are smarter than you. Okay? Because they have skill sets you don't know at all. Okay, you may have the vision, you may have the gumption, you may have the grit and the de determination, but you don't know everything. And when you hire people who have skill sets that complement yours, you end up adding and enhancing, uh, you know, to your, your adding to your vision and enhancing it. I think that's benefit for the organization at large also. Absolutely. It's worked well for me with every business I've created. 
I've hired or partnered with people who are far smarter than me, thank God, uh, you know, and have been able to align with my vision. And then we've created some fantastic businesses out there. The other thing that I would say, um, just one more point on, um, you know, entrepreneurship is, is empathy. In this very fast-paced, crazy world, I think we have to stop and be a little kind to each other, kind to ourselves. Um, and as entrepreneurs, we can define how the organization is actually going to, uh, you know, be defined, what the culture is going to be. And what we, we don't, we actually have the luxury of not saying, you have to check in at nine o'clock and leave at five o'clock. We have the luxury as entrepreneurs of creating something completely new because the landscape is completely fresh. Um, and we can say, you know, that do your work, perform to your KRAs, do whatever is required of, of your role in description, but how you do it and what time you do it in and what construct you do it in is up to you. So what you're actually doing is you're entrusting your people with, well, you're empowering them, you're self-empowering yourself as well. Uh, I would like to ask Sabha uh, further on this since you're working in 20 different countries and time we are talking about, time management we are talking about here. So how would, like you, how would you like to explain about the time management? You as a person, how do you handle working in 20 different countries? It's never ever been an issue for me. Um, you know, just touching on what my colleague just said, because you're an entrepreneur, you have the luxury of creating that time for yourself yeah. and, and the time that you would go to those different countries and to those different offices and handle the management. And, and also, I, I am a, a single mom, and so... Oh, oh good, yeah. high five. So, so for so me... So am I. Yeah, oh. Single. Oh. Okay, we should all high five. Single moms, we're half, half, uh, <laughs> yeah. half, half single. So, you know, making, balancing that is very important and making sure that my daughter feels that I'm there is also very important to me. And the luxury of being an entrepreneur g gives you that. And that's why I feel that as you should own it. Start from there because all the other, whatever else anybody says to you, if you don't own it, then you're not ready for it ready for it, pretty much. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, you about the challenges do you think uh, the women or the entrepreneurs are facing and how to resolve those challenges? Yeah, um, I have seen many women, they, they are getting into businesses and it's, it's really good time for women entrepreneurs to get into startups and new kind of businesses are open for all. But in my journey of business in last 30 years, what I have seen, the conviction of losing anything in business is what women are actually lacking. They give up very fast. They, the moment they start losing things, they become insecure. The family pressure, social pressure, other pressures, are so much on them, why don't you go back on job, why don't you do something else, give up this, why are you losing family money? But when you're making money, people will encourage you like anything, but when you're losing money, they will Actually, just... Actually, I want input of everybody yes. in this. Her, when you're you know? losing more money as a woman entrepreneur, you will be the first one to be target. No, even the males don't get that kind of bashing the women get. So be strong. Be fighter, don't give up, you know, ga game is make and lose both, so, you know, it's not just always making money, it's, it can be losing money, losing businesses, changing tracks, many challenges will come. But if you really want to be entrepreneur, you, your test, test is that you have to survive in all circumstances. So basically, it starts from self and ends itself. Yeah. Tashi, would you, you would like to add something here? So... Um, what my dear friend here is saying. So when I left a 15-year-old, fantastic, very successful, page three existence in fashion, um, everybody turned around and said, really, why do you want to be a spiritual healer? You want to become a guru or something? I said, you know, I've made so much money with fashion. Believe you me, I don't make that kind of money in, in 
uh, the work I do now as a spiritual thing, but it is so self-satisfying to be able to help others because you have faced challenges. So it's fantastic to be able to reach out to others, have the empathy, have the humility to say, yes, I have also made mistakes and the mistakes you are making are normal. We are humans after all. We are allowed to make mistakes. Come on. So make mistakes, don't give up, rise up, and please remember, you are not going to rise up alone. You're going to have to hold other people's hands and make them rise with you. Otherwise, you're going to fall and nobody is going to come to your help, for sure. For yeah, sure. I think take life easy. Don't, it's not There's a race. No you're not in race There's at no all. Stress. But are we allowed to make mistakes as women entrepreneurs? Dashi, no, the no, no, world no. doesn't give it, uh, you know, doesn't make it so easy for us. No, Anika. Nobody is allowed to make mistakes in the world. I would not say women, even men are not allowed to make mistakes, but men put up a fantastic facade around them that, you know, we are powerful and we can do this. And women believe that they are not being allowed to make mistakes. Men are also not. Men are no, also Because as vulnerability. You are washed all the time because you are women and you are yes. trying to stand up. Men are you're as washed vulnerable. all the time. So yeah. if we are vulnerable, we are considered weak. Whereas vulnerability is not weakness. But I don't think we should even look at those eyes who are watching us. Just keep your, turn <laughs> your face are, and move on. Men are as vulnerable. It's just that they don't talk about their vulnerability. And we women give them the opportunity to say, no, no, but men can't be vulnerable. Come on, my 22-year-old son cries when his girlfriend leaves him. And we say, please cry. Because I think it's the perfect way to deal with your heartbreak. You must. I think right? we have audience. Um, they want to ask some questions um, since... Tashi is there, she can tell you about Can we get a mic in the back, please? And mediation, international trade, about women entrepreneurs. Somebody from the audience? So, okay, I have a question for you, Tashi. There's one going there. Okay. Yeah, ma'am, you have been in the filmmaking, uh, just to you. If you, I, if I take you back, for a movie called Andhi, where, the, where, the, where women had to maintain a balance in the political career and the social life. Okay, so we are discussing in the manufacturing organization or marketing. Now, what is my, my question is relating to the women who are who want to progress in the political field, and I call it as an industry also nowadays. And then, how to maintain balance in this area of political in India, women and you know men folk. See, uh, someone just now uh, said that it is, uh, life is always where whichever position you are in, it's a meditation and mediation, okay? So if two are equally concerned about each other, any profession if you are in can be balanced easily. So I think our session ends here with the, the great amalgamation of meditation, mediation and... Uh, vulnerability and human rights and all of above we are not talking I mean, I'm glad we never talked about gender here we talked about balancing the gender equality here right I I was actually talking to my friend who's here with me and I was saying that the next time I'm invited to a platform to speak I would like it to be not labeled Mm -hmm. Woman entrepreneur. What is so Correct. we don't do like in the Absolutely earlier panel right. when the discussion was happening, they were saying that we don't say when men are entrepreneurs, we don't say men entrepreneurs. We just say entrepreneur. So I'm glad we never talked about uh, a gender. I am so here, glad though that I felt that gender inequality is very less in India yeah. than out there. And believe you me, it's not necessary. The successful women are always like, you know, not ready to accommodate socially or family or anything like that. Like someone just gave example of Andi because of conflicts when the woman is more successful. It's not necessary. It depends on individuals and how, I mean, men have to start accepting wo uh, working women also now. That's Sabah, the time. you have to say something. Yeah, I, I just want to leave the young um, women and men out there with a thought, stop, you know, looking at yourself as either a man or a woman. I mean, leave sexuality out of it. You're an intelligent human being and you want to build a business. Start there and then go from there. Yeah, what I'd like to say is, again, um, I was hearing the other, uh, the last uh, panel as well. There is a lot of 
uh, man-woman conflict. But the fact is, each one of us, as what Tashi says, we have a man in us and we have a woman in us. And, and uh, I think <laughs> when we can balance it out, and I'll give my story, that when I started working, I believed that I had to be better, I was in advertising, I had to be better than all the men. There were only two women and l only men out there. So I, I think some way I pretended for a certain time of my career that I wanted to be like a man. But I think my true self came out when I realized the balance between uh, the good part of the woman and the good part of the man that resides inside me. And I was able to resolve that to truly find myself. And that is why I want to help others find themselves. And I think that's, we are fortunate that we are here and on this I panel. I think I would like to wrap up this uh panel discussion uh, since today is Shivratri. And I think Shiva is a great amalgamation of a man and a woman. I'm a Shakti, I'm a Shiva. I'm everything male and female, light and dark, flesh and spirit, perfectly balanced in one single moment, lasting the eternity. The logic is simple. If you do the right things, the right things will happen to you, even without your intent. So the most important thing is to do the right thing. It's not about man and woman. It's about humanity. Yeah.